until I make your enemies or put your enemies under your feet. This is what is meant by Theonoustos. God breathed from the very mouth of God. The words which were written by David, the words which were written by Isaiah, the words that were written by Paul, by Peter, by James, are all the words of God. When the scripture is read, it is God speaking. This is why I can honestly tell you, the one place in our worship service where we can claim absolute infallibility is when we read the scriptures. And that's the only place that we can claim absolute infallibility. When we read the scriptures, that one part of the service is without error. So we regard the scripture as God speaking. Second thing, we need to regard both testaments with the same authority. Notice here he says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, and he begins to quote, but notice the quote is from the Old Testament. He's making the assertion that the Old Testament is just as inspired as the New Testament. Now why do I find that important to say? I find that important to say because there are many who only give heed to the New Testament. Many times the Old Testament gets passed over at a glance or not even discussed at all. I've even heard it said that in churches that there would be reading of Scripture, reading from the Old Testament and reading from the New Testament, and people would sit during the reading of the Old Testament and stand during the reading of the New Testament. And some of you may have come out of a tradition like that, and I'm not saying anything derogatory against you, but I think that that is a testimony to the understanding, a wrong understanding of Scripture, and that is that the New Testament in some form or fashion is more the Word of God. It is not. There is a song that came out a few years ago, and it gave rise to something that I call Red Letter Christianity. Red letter Christianity is this. It is the failure in the modern church that says that there are words in the Bible that are red. We know what words those are. That's the words of Jesus. They did very nice by putting all of His words in red. But what has happened is those red words have somehow taken precedence over the words in black. The problem with that is this. The red letters are no more inspired than the black letters. There was a song, as I said, that came out a few years ago by a band by, by the name of DC Talk. And it was a fairly popular song called, uh, in, it's called The Red Letters. And this is the verse, the verse of the song. It says, there is love in the red letters. There is truth in the red letters. There is hope for the hopeless. Peace and forgiveness. There is life in the red letters. And of course, all that is true, but the Bible is more than just the red letters. In fact, if we are to say anything, I would say there is love in all the letters. There is peace in all the letters. There is truth in all the letters. It's not just in the red letters. If we say we love what Jesus said and yet deny the Old Testament as being on equal footing with the, as the Word of God, we deny what Jesus said. Because it was He who granted such a place of prominence to Scripture in His ministry which at that time was only the Old Testament. Much of Jesus' own words were quotations of the Old Testament. So many of the red letters are just restatements of the black letters. We must understand that the Old Testament and the New Testament are both equally God's Word and both equally deserving of our attention and devotion. Finally and thirdly, We've already said we need to regard Scripture as God speaking. We need to regard both Testaments with the same authority. Finally, we should regard obedience to Scripture. This is a long point, so if you're writing down, I'll give, you, I'll give it to you twice. We should regard obedience to Scripture as obedience to God and disobedience to Scripture as disobedience to God. Again, we should regard obedience to Scripture as obedience to God and disobedience to Scripture as disobedience to God. When the Bible tells us to do something, and we refrain from something that the Bible tells us to do, this is just, this is not just denying the whims of a person. This is not just denying Moses' thoughts or Paul's prejudices. This is denying God's Word. And to deny them is to basically look God in the face and say, You are wrong. 
To deny what the Scripture says do and do something else is to look God in the face and say you are wrong. Is anybody here this morning ready to do that? To look God in the face and say you're wrong? Just because this is a written word and not a spoken word does not make it any less God's word. And I thought about this as I was preparing this message. If I got up in the morning and I said to Ashley, Ashley, I want you to clean the kitchen and I want you to do the dishes while I'm gone to the church and when I get back I expect it to be done. Alright, I've given her my word. Now, she can obey it or she can not obey it and suffer the consequences, but she has my word. But let's say Ashley's asleep. And I go in and I write down for her, Ashley, while I'm gone to the church, I want you to do the dishes and clean the kitchen and it needs to be done before I get home. And I initial it and I put it next to her bed. If she looks at that piece of paper reads my words and disobeys it, she has not disobeyed the paper. She disobeyed me. Likewise, when we look at this word and we say, oh, I'm just disobeying words on a page. No, you are not. You are disobeying the word of God. 